Hi, I'm Lindsay Alexander, and this is MyBankTracker.com. As Americans, it's been drilled into our heads that owning a home is the ultimate American dream. Home ownership is a wonderful thing. For thousands of years, people have owned land, and that's what separated the nobles from the peasants. Times have changed. Not all of us want to be homeowners, and not all of us want to just rent, but sometimes some just can't figure out what they want. There are some concepts you should keep in mind when deciding what would be good for you. Most experts say, without question, that no sane person should buy unless they plan on staying in the same location for at least five years. So buying a home in the city where you land your first post-graduation job is probably not the best idea, unless you're sure that this first job will last you a good number of years. And for those lifelong renters, it would be crazy to buy just after the grandkids are being born and you buy and relocate into a different state just to be near the little ones. So you want to buy to grow. If you're 30 years old, recently married, and childless, you are in that demographic beloved by people who want to lend you money. You are most likely a pretty low credit risk, and you may qualify for a decent rate on a mortgage for that quaint one-bedroom apartment in that fashionable neighborhood you love. But just wait. What are you going to do a few years from now when you find yourself expecting your first child? Don't get sucked into buying a home for who you are now. If you can't afford to buy something big enough for the family you'll become, keep renting for a while. And here's an exercise that every potential home buyer should try. Pick a town where you think you'd like to buy your home. Then go stand outside the commuter train there around 8 p.m. Hang around there for a few hours and watch people. Ask yourself if they look tired. If they do, it's probably because they've been commuting for hours. If there's no commuter train, leave your job after work some night and drive to town where you're thinking of buying. Do that many, many times. Does the commute seem bearable? Millions of Americans buy property that's so far away from where they work. Those homes tend to be cheaper than in the city centers where folks work. But is owning a home so important to you that you're willing to spend four hours a day, five days a week for the rest of your life commuting from southern New Jersey to midtown Manhattan? Would it maybe renting someplace closer make for a more enjoyable existence? And the reason that home ownership tends to make more financial sense over time than renting is simple. The government subsidizes home ownership. If you own a home, you get to deduct the cost of borrowing to pay for it. That's a really, really great thing for the banks that lend money to home buyers. And it's a really great thing for the people who want to buy homes too. But how long can it last? You've read the news. Times are tough in America these days. The government is short of cash. Gradually reducing the mortgage deduction could generate some $250 billion for the Feds by 2021. A study by the Libertarian Research Group recently say that the mortgage deductions effectively exclude $1.26 trillion a year from taxes. So before you sign that 30-year mortgage, ask yourself, what are the odds that the government won't decide it needs that money for at least the next three decades? I'm Lindsay Alexander with MyBankTracker.com, and together we're going to build your finances and rebuild the world.